All right, it's time to do another beginner project. I wanted to put together something that was practical that you could either use yourself or maybe you want to give away as a gift because these make great gifts and the holidays are just around the corner. Uh, we're going to be making one of those large giant porch signs. Uh, those are so popular right now and with wood burning the possibilities are endless. You can customize this so many ways and really if you wanted to make just any kind of sign you can use the techniques in this video to do that uh, you don't have to just make it for your porch but that's what we're doing today i'm getting off topic so let's get into it and let's get into the details all right you guys so we are going to dive into this porch sign piece um i got this template from creative fabrica they have a ton of gorgeous porch sign templates. I'm gonna put some links below. Or you can go to their site and buy the one you want. A lot of them come in bundles, like in packs. And if you guys, if you wait for a deal, you can usually get it cheaper. Uh, sometimes they go on silver like a dollar. Uh, but if you just wanna make your own gift, maybe you wanna make a gift for someone for the holidays, this is the perfect gift. Because I'm gonna tell you, you can customize it in so many ways. Um, favorite, you know, sports team, or maybe they have a favorite kind of animal or whatever the hell I don't know you can come up with it you know who they are let's just jump right to it I'm going to show you how I did it and how I picked out the wood and stuff like that at the store so here we go okay so here's a shot at Home Depot of some great poplar planks now I actually use pine for this project just because I was trying to uh, reduce cost for the video and, and pine works fine. It's it's a fine wood. It gets a little bit challenging when you're trying to get nice crisp lines and it's got knots and stuff like that in it. So if you're going to make this as a gift or for yourself, my suggestion is poplar. It's a nice soft wood. It's going to make it easier to burn. Like I said, I chose pine. I was really looking for something that didn't have a ton of knots in it. Because I was burning on such a large scale, I wasn't too concerned that the knots would be in an inconvenient area but I was still looking to make sure they didn't have too many and I chose one that was already cut at four feet it was already cut to what I wanted poplar is sold by the linear foot so if you don't have a way to cut this at home if you don't have a table saw or miter saw you can use those uh, do-it-yourself cutting stations at Home Depot you can get somebody to help you with it or you can do it yourself and that way you can cut the piece to the length that you want so one thing I got, once I got the pine home, I brought it outside. I sanded it very, very well. It had a lot of nicks and gouges and marks and stuff like that in it. When they ship these pieces, they just kind of ding them all up. So I sanded it with a 120 grit first to really get all of the gouges and stuff out. And then I went back over it with a 220 to get a nice, smooth, softer surface. So like I said, I got my template from Creative Fabrica and I'm gonna print this out using Photoshop. Photoshop has a really great feature and then it lets you print your template to scale in sections. So I was able to print this out on several sheets of paper and then tape them all together in order to create my template. I have a really detailed video that walks you through step-by-step -step how to do that using Photoshop. I'll put a link pop up here and a link in the description if you want to watch that. It's especially helpful if you want to do a custom porch sign. And if you don't have Photoshop, you can download it and use the 30 day free trial or you can purchase it if you're going to be using it a lot and doing a lot of templates. It's really, really ha handy to have when you're doing these custom templates. Now that my template is all printed and taped together, I'm just going to slide a sheet of carbon underneath it and trace my template onto the wood. Just using a regular old mechanical pencil here and tracing out each item from the template onto the wood surface. So any type of wood burning kit that you have is gonna be great for this project. If you have a brass tip kit or a wire tip kit, either type of kit will work. First thing that we're gonna do is use a skew tip or straight edge tip or sometimes referred to as a universal tip. These are perfect for outlining. These are perfect for getting some nice crisp edges on the outside of your artwork. It's gonna make it look nice and finished and a little bit more sort of professionally done. 
may not come out perfect, but that's okay. You, you want it to have a little bit of a handmade look, right? You're giving this to somebody as a gift. You don't want, to, want it to look machine made. You want it to have a, a little bit of imperfection, but you want it to also have some nice crisp outer lines. So I'm just gonna go through the entire art piece and outline each element. The big flowers, the big sunflower pieces in the middle, I'm just gonna leave those outlined because I'm going to add color in these at the end using some acrylic markers. So I'm not gonna fill them in with texture in the next step. So the texture part is really the most fun part in my opinion. It is the part where you can get creative, you can do different textures, and you can just start filling in each element on the piece. You can experiment with different textures. Maybe you wanna do like a dot pattern. Uh, you might wanna do like a straight line pattern like I'm doing with the letters. Or you can use your shader tip to create a nice sort of like horseshoe pattern inside your letters. You can really experiment here and get creative. If you've got stamps uh, in a brass tip kit, you might want to fill in these larger letters with stamps. It's going to give it a little bit more visual appeal. Or if you want to do just a flat burn, you can use your shader tip and just fill in with just a solid flat burn. You don't have to add the texture if you want to save a little bit of time and kind of move through this a little quicker. A flat burn is a great way to go. Okay, so like I mentioned before, I left my sunflowers just outlined with a border. I didn't fill in with texture on any of the petals or in the center. So now I'm going to use my acrylic markers to fill in with some color. This set of markers is from Arteza. I got these on Amazon. I'll put a link below. These are super, super easy to use and it really helps when you wanna add like a fill in color. So I've got a couple of yellows and an orange here. I'm gonna use my orange to make it look a little bit more shaded and I'm gonna use the yellows to make, to, to add the highlights, to add the punches of color in the petals. And if you don't have markers, that's fine. You can use acrylic paints. You can use watercolor paints. You can use any kind of paint that you feel comfortable using and adding color. I really like the markers because they, it's so easy to apply. I don't have to get out brushes and palettes and, and have all these little bottles and everything out on my desk. I can just break out my markers and add a little bit of color and it's just super easy. For the center of the sunflower, I'm gonna use the bronze color I want it to have a little bit of shine, a little bit of shimmer. I burned in, it's gonna darken the center up a little bit, but it's gonna be like a nice mid-range color between the petals and the burned little dots. All right, you guys, it is all done. We have transferred, we have burned, we have added color. Now it's time to seal it. I'm not gonna show that part in the video because I'm actually gonna flip this over and add a second design to the other side so I can have two signs with one piece of wood. Because this is going outside, I'm going to add an outdoor varnish that has sunlight and moisture protection in it, and that is far urethane. It's my favorite varnish to use for outdoor pieces. The other thing is make sure you're not putting pieces in direct sunlight, but if you're gonna put your piece outside, just keep those things in mind. Now you can put this on your porch, or you can give it to a friend, and that's it, you guys. Easy peasy. Thank you guys so much for joining me in today's video. I hope you got some useful tips and info for your pyrography journey. And don't forget to check me out over on Sea of Fans where I add exclusive content just for fans. And we have a live monthly uh, Q&A get together and we do a bunch of other stuff. So check it out over there on Sea of Fans. Thanks you guys. And I'm gonna put links for all that below for the daily gift. Um, <laughs> My throat made a noise. <gasps> Get my face right. Where mm. well, my lip stuff is. Where it is. Pretty my lips up. Just ever so slightly pinkish hue. A pinkish hue. Seinfeld reference. Let me reset.